The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. Three books I read recently. G'day to all you lovely people and welcome back to my channel. I'm Kathy, and today I'm going to talk about three books that I read recently which fall within the categories of the good, the bad and the ugly. I am not going to tell you which book is which, but you will find out as I discuss the book. I'm intending to do, I guess, mini reviews rather than a full video just on one book. Now, for those who don't know, I took the title from a movie, a spaghetti western with Clint Eastwood, Van Cleef, Lee Van Cleef, I think, and I can't remember the third person. I always liked that film, but I just love the movie theme from it, which is why I decided to call this The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. If people like this idea, then I might make it a series, but I guess we will see how people react to the video. All right, so let's get started. The first book I want to talk about is this, The Rook by Daniel O'Malley. He is an Australian author and I was really keen to read this. I love supporting Australian authors and I'm always looking for new ones who I hope to fall in love with. Now this book is a fantasy it is, however, based in England, and it is about a young woman who wakes up surrounded by dead bodies with no memory of her past. A very intriguing premise, I thought. She also finds a letter in her pocket from her former self telling her or sharing information about what might have led to her finding herself in this park surrounded by bodies. I really liked the world building in this. I liked this organization that O'Malley created called the Checkery, which is an old institution or magical institution. I also like some of the history that he has introduced in this book. His writing style is really good. He's a good writer. He has a good grasp of language, a wide vocabulary, and I didn't find it too bloated at times. The only issue I had with it is that at one point it seemed to degenerate because it certainly wasn't apparent at the beginning, but it seemed that some of his dialogue sounded very YA. I think it was meant to be funny. I personally did not find it funny. In fact, it annoyed me, if anything. But I've mentioned before, I do not like YA books and the way some of the characters and our main characters spoke to, for example, her sister just came across as really annoying, for me anyway. Now, one thing, however, that I really disliked about this book was the letters. Initially, I thought it was only going to be a few letters where we are given some background as to what happened to our character and how she got into this situation and what the status quo is. And in fact, her former self gives her the option of either disappearing and leaving her former life behind or trying to find out what actually happened to her. Not surprisingly, she chose to find out what happened to her because it wouldn't have been a book otherwise, right? And we find out through these letters that her former self had a position of rook in the checkery, which seemed to be a bit like a logistics officer, I think. That's kind of the impression I got. A bureaucratic position though. And it seemed to be quite a complex position. In addition, her former self was not known for fighting or using her magical abilities, but rather was known as somebody who was very shy and retiring. And that is certainly not what our main character is in this book. She seems to be quite different in many aspects. And we find out throughout the book just how much the two differ. I don't think that is surprising. People are shaped by our experiences and since our character has no memory of 
her past experiences, her character will differ to some degree. However, she comes into this very complex position at the checkery, which apparently she has no difficulty dealing with. I found that very hard to accept, actually, that in a very short space of time, she was able to do her job almost as competently, if not more so, than her former self. And if that wasn't enough, she also develops into quite a kick-ass fighter. I think they even use that term in the book, but I could be wrong. Regardless, it seemed like she was just too capable at everything. A bit of a Mary Sue, I guess. That's how she came across to me. It just didn't ring true whatsoever. And it really detracted, I think, from the book. I would have liked to have seen her struggle more. It would have been a lot more realistic anyway. The plot. The plot. Yeah. I did not find the plot intriguing. I found it meandered a lot. And worse... It was constantly interrupted by letters from her former self. In fact, these letters, <laughs> I got sick of them after the third. Two or three, I think, would have been sufficient, but the author kept using this device to explain things. It was all tell, not show. And in fact, the letters were extremely irritating. They not only interrupted something critical that was going on, but they didn't even read like letters. They read like a fiction writer writing a paragraph. It, they came across as very disingenuous and I hated them. <laughs> I often wanted to skip them, but I knew that I would find out something critical in these letters. So that was my biggest complaint about this book. I thought this device was well overused, substantially overused, and it shouldn't have been. It detracted a lot from the flow of the story because we would have these annoying letters where her former self would go into detail, say, about the history of a species or a character in the book. For me anyway, finding out, say, a bit of the history of a world or characters is much more intriguing than having it all laid out for you in, say, letter forms or in any form whatsoever. Far too little show and too much tell. Yeah. As for the characters, I did not like or dislike our main character. I sometimes found her annoying and a bit of a smart ass, and that didn't appeal to me, but I did not get a great grasp of her character, perhaps because she had no memory of her former self. She was still figuring out who she is, and we were supposed to figure it out with her. Regardless, I didn't think she was greatly drawn, though she wasn't terrible. There were a couple of really interesting characters, like a vampire. However, the author just touched on that character, and I think I would like to know so much more about them. There was also a woman from America who was a little bit of a caricature, though she was actually a little bit more interesting than our main character. In summary, I did not enjoy this book. I had to force myself to finish. It took me over a week because I kept putting it off because I wasn't enjoying it, nor did I find the mystery or plot compelling to read. I also found the antagonist quite weakly drawn and not frightening whatsoever. I just found them dull, actually, to be honest, and I did not like what the author decided to utilize as antagonists. And that's all I want to say. Ultimately, this was a slog for me. I did not enjoy it. I thought it was a bad book, actually. And I don't know if I want to read any more of his books, though I know he's written several in this series. As for a score, I'm going to give this a 4 out of 10, which means I do not believe I will ever read this again. Unfortunately, I think 
Daniel O'Malley isn't for me. I don't know if he'll write any other series, but I have zero interest in continuing this series anyway. Shame, isn't it? Yeah. Next, I wanted to discuss a book by Terry Pratchett, Masquerade. This is, I think, book 18 in the Discord series, and I loved this book. Oh my God, yeah. Just for the scene between Granny Weatherwax and Death, I would have loved this book. But watching two of my favorite characters facing off, oh my God, I was giddy with delight. <laughs> this one was hilarious. I have not loved all the witches' books equally. In fact, the last two were not my favorites, whereas I loved the first one and the one that introduced Granny. But this one, I could not stop laughing throughout it. And I think the reason I loved it so much was Nanny just, <laughs> she was hysterically funny. I thought so anyway. I also really liked this character of Agnes, who we had met in a previous book. I thought she was much more interesting than Margaret, who was the third witch of the trio in past books. Margaret I found quite dull. I don't find Agnes dull. This book is also a mystery and takes place in the world of opera. It is a satire of the Phantom of the Opera and I found it so funny, so entertaining. It has become one of my favorites actually of the disco books. I just loved the interaction between the characters, but I also loved what Pratchett had to say about, I guess, visual media and how it doesn't matter how talented somebody is, what does matter is how good looking they are. And this has always been something that has annoyed me, that so many talented people cannot get ahead, say, in the arts because they are not good looking enough or pretty enough. And I guess because that aligns so well with my own thoughts about, say, particularly the movie or music industry, I really enjoyed this book. The mystery was good. I can't say it was the best I've read, but it did leave you guessing at times. And Granny and Nanny were just so amazingly good in this book that I don't think anyone could read it and not laugh out loud. <laughs> yeah, especially Nanny. You know, I think she's growing even more on me with each subsequent book. She has grown into this character who is just so hilariously funny and such a perfect foil for Granny, I think, who can be much more serious. I also like that this book dealt with how Granny, being a very powerful witch, could go either good or bad. She could actually end up being a bad or evil witch if she let herself. I thought that was another aspect of the book that added to the richness of it. But yeah, I love this. This was a very good book. And for a score, I would give it an 8 out of 10. Yeah. Last but not least is the book I have obviously decided to call Ugly. And when I use the term ugly, it doesn't necessarily mean it is a bad book. It means something about it I didn't like or it put me off or I found ugly. Whatever it is. And the book is, because I can't find my copy, so I'll put a picture up. The book is The Lost Man by Jane Harper. I have now read four books by her. I think I have one left and I think I'll be reading it soon. I have mentioned her before. She's an Australian author. And whilst I really love how she describes, say, the landscapes of Australia, because I think she nails them, and I do love the way she describes, say, conversations or dialogues between characters. They come across as very authentic. I don't think her strength lies in the mysteries themselves. Out of the four books I've read, i am always felt dissatisfied with the endings in some way or another. Only one book I was quite happy with, though apparently it isn't as popular as her other ones. But to me, it was a more realistic resolution and there were some clues laid 
but I think that is my biggest complaint about her plots. She does not lay enough clues throughout her books to make the resolution seem realistic. We start off the book with two brothers meeting at a remote place in the outback called the Stockman's Grave, where they find the dead body of their middle brother, Cameron, who died apparently a horrific death of dehydration and exposure. We are told that the temperatures at the time were like in their mid 40s Celsius, which is extreme heat where there is no shade anywhere except near this grave. I really enjoyed this book because it took place in the Outback, which is my favourite place in Australia. A lot of the book also takes place on a remote cattle station. And I felt that Harper did an excellent job at capturing what country people are like in Australia. Perhaps I'm unrealistic, but those times that I have visited the country, they seem very true to life. The way they spoke was very true to life. I've seen several criticisms that the author used the word mate far too often, and I think these criticisms are unjustified. If you've been to Australia, you will notice that people do speak like that. They use mate as a second word. I know so many people who talk like that. So the dialogue was not unauthentic in my opinion. It seemed very true to life. Now how the brother ended up at this grave was intriguing. I was trying to figure out how the murder, if it was a murder, because I assumed it was a murder, took place or whether the brother had deliberately wandered off. His car is found nine kilometers away, fully stocked up with water and provisions and yet none were found on the body. I also liked the character of Nathan, one of a few characters who I felt I understood and I liked. I find some of her characters a little too sketchily drawn. I don't seem to get a great grasp of them. I get more a grasp of their history or what emotions they're going through, but not necessarily what they are like. Whereas I felt I understood Nathan and I liked Nathan very much. The character Nathan, I think, was the best drawn of the lot because we see the book through his perspective and we learn about some terrible choices that he made which led to horrific consequences, if you ask me. He was a very empathetic character, I found anyway. And yet, typical, I think, of people from the outback, or so we are told and so I believe, as in very taciturn and very stoic, very strong as well to be able to live in such a remote landscape. Now, some of the women did annoy me. They seemed to be caricatures. There was an ex-wife, which was the ex-wife from hell, I think, whose behavior was just appalling, though perhaps she is not completely unrealistic and yet it seems sometimes there was a little bit of victim blaming and I even felt that the women were a little demonized which is surprising given that Harper is a woman as well. I just didn't really like the women in this book overall. Yeah, I didn't hate them all. I just found that they irritated me. <laughs> they just didn't seem to take any action on their own behalf. I think people refer to it as lack of agency. Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to mention spoilers here. So be aware if you're looking to read this book, you might want to skip the spoilers. I did find it interesting trying to figure out how exactly this person had ended up at this grave and trying to figure out who if anybody was involved or whether it was suicide but then we come to a lot of backstory about the history of this family where abuse took place i didn't enjoy that aspect of it nor i guess should i but it's been done so many times i wasn't looking for it in this book perhaps i'm unrealistic to expect not to have anything awful like abuse 
take place in a book that involves a possible murder, but still, it was just an aspect I didn't enjoy. And part of me did wonder why no one had ever spoken up about this abuse, because they don't. But on top of the abuse, which I did not enjoy reading about, something occurred on the night of the funeral. Two parties had sex at this funeral or after this funeral, which I found absolutely repulsive. Now, this author has done things like this in previous books where I couldn't believe my eyes when I was reading it that something had taken place. It just seemed so inappropriate because one of the parties was the widow who had sex on the night of her husband's funeral. Regardless of what we think of her husband, Cameron, that just seems such a callous thing to do, to actually have sex on the night of the funeral. It really disgusted me, actually, and I thought, really? They couldn't have waited a day or a few days? Did it have to be the night of the funeral? It was highly inappropriate and really put me off, actually. Not just the book, but also the characters themselves. And if that wasn't enough, when we find out who the murderer is, because it was a murder, they get away with it. Wow, yeah, that bugged me as well. I guess it should actually, it was a murder. And yet we did not hear enough, I don't think, as to the reasoning behind the murder. I kept thinking other things could have been done. Why would you do this? And not just a murder, but a horrific murder where the person truly suffered. <laughs> so yeah, I was really disgusted that the murderer got away with it, but I also disliked that there wasn't enough reasoning to explain their actions. I just thought, oh, another one that I'm not happy with the ending. Yeah. Still, overall, this was not a bad book. None of her books are bad. She's a very good writer. I really love the way she creates an atmosphere in her books. And I love how she describes the landscape. It seems so true, so authentic. It's just her mysteries don't wrap up the way I would like anyway. But perhaps I'm alone in that. Regardless, this isn't a book I wouldn't recommend. It's just be aware you may be dissatisfied with the ending. And for a score, I would give it a five and a half to six out of 10. Well, that is all I have for you guys today. I am interested to hear if you guys like this idea of me talking about three books that fall within these categories. If people like it, then I might make it a regular series. I'd also like to hear what you thought about my reviews of these books and whether you have any three books that fall within the categories of the good, the bad and the ugly. And you can let me know down in the comments or you can contact me on Instagram. Thank you all so very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And if you like this video, you can do the usual. You can like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you all have a beautiful day and I will see you next time. Bye.